Welcome back to eating takeout with type 1 diabetes by request. I'm gonna be going through how I bolus for my sushi tonight. Sushi is very difficult to bolus for. I find that it's really common to under bolus for sushi. And the reason is because number one, oftentimes you don't realize how much rice you're eating when you have sushi. And number two, there's often a lot of sauces, especially if you get like special rolls, there's a lot of sauces that have added carbs in it that you might not be accounting for. And thirdly, sometimes sushi is considered a high fat food, which can require additional insulin on top of the normal carb count. So we're looking at a few different things here, depending on what you order, what you get. As you guys know, so much of food, we can't generalize it, right? Some sushi has a lot of rice. Some sushi has a little bit of rice. Some sushi has, you know, added like fried bits, like a tempura that might increase the carb count. So it's really hard to say, bull is this much for one piece of sushi. Online, you're gonna find everything from five grams for a single piece of sushi all the way up to, you know, 15 or 20. So it's really hard to generalize like with most things with diabetes, I find the best thing to do is trial and error, see what works for you. And then when you try again, try again. So I'm going to break down me going through a sushi restaurant that I've never eaten at before. So I'm not sure really how to do this, but I'm going to take you guys with me. If I end up failing, that's totally fine. As I talked about last week when I did this, failing forward or learning from your failures is such a great strategy to have with diabetes because it can help you grow and learn from your mistakes versus you know ending up restricting foods if you guys don't know hey my name is meg i've had type 1 diabetes for 25 years i have my master's in nutrition and food science and i am three days away from finishing my dietetic internship to become a registered dietitian i just have my exam after i finish my internship so i am in the home stretch and i'm so excited to officially call myself a registered dietitian but Got a, one more big exam to get through before that. Please be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate the support. And let me know if there's any other foods that you wanna see me bowls for. I know on the last video that I did with Vietnamese food, if you haven't watched it, you can go check it out. You guys left some comments. So I already have a few weeks lined up, um, but if you have any others you wanna see, be sure to drop them below. Okay, sushi. Before we get to the actual sushi, I'm a huge fan of starting with edamame, simply because I love it. But it's also a really great source of protein and fiber. I just get them salted. So we also know that it's not just the food that you're eating, but also everything else going on in your day with your blood sugar at the current moment that will determine the bullets. So taking a quick peek at my Dexcom, my starting blood sugar is 91 and I've been staying pretty steady for the past few hours. I have had one low today. The breakfast that I had, I did my normal bolus and I went low. I don't know if it was because of some extra activity today, but um, I am keeping that in the back of my head that I'm probably gonna be a little bit more conservative with this bolus. Not crazy, um, but I'm just gonna keep that in the back of my head. So while these are a great source of protein and fiber, they do have some carbs in them. So this is, about two cups. I don't think I'm going to eat all of this. So I'm going to call this about 10 grams worth of carbs. I'm not doing a pre-bolus because my blood sugar is already sitting a little bit lower. And because I'm starting with a food that is higher in protein and fiber, that's pretty slow for me to digest and absorb. So I don't think I need a huge pre-bolus starting with this edamame. Okay, now going into the sushi. So the edamame I finished like not even half. So I bolus 10 grams for this, 10 grams of carbs for this. So I'm gonna say that this was like actually nothing because I don't think that that much is actually gonna make an impact. So I'm just gonna take 10 off of whatever I think the sushi is gonna be. Again, it's, it's really hard for me to describe how much I'm gonna bolus for for the sushi because I've just eaten this so many times. I know generally if I'm having two and a half to three rolls, how much I need. Um, but I'm gonna start off by saying that each sushi, I'm gonna say is around eight to 10 carbs. Um, again, I'm gonna go more on that eight side because I've been a little bit lower today and I think my blood sugar continued to drop a little bit as I've just been sitting here. Yeah, we're at 76 now. So we're already heading down. 
So I just, I'm gonna be a little bit more conservative with this and say eight per roll, but I'm not gonna give that all up front because I do know that sushi, it kind of hits me over time. And so I'm going to start with like five grams per roll that I eat right now. And I anticipate I'm gonna eat about 10. So I'm gonna give 50 grams worth of carbs in my pump calculator using my ratio. Uh, but I'm gonna take off 10 that the amame was, so I'm gonna say 40. And that's where I'm gonna start. I think I'm gonna need more. So I'm gonna give that 40 grams up front, 40 grams of carbs worth of insulin. And then once I see where my blood sugar is in about an hour, I'll either give that second dose. So that would be about three grams per every uh, sushi that I had. So let's say I do have that 10, then I'll give about 30 gr more grams. Or if I notice I'm not trending up at all or I'm not rising, I might just keep it as is and then wait another hour and see what happens. So again, it's not a perfect science. Again, I haven't had sushi from this place before. I don't know exactly how it's gonna react in my body. Um, you know, I'm just gonna do my best and try, but here we go. Small update as I eat. I am definitely going to eat more than 10 um, pieces. So I had both of, all of the fish rolls. So that was eight pieces per, so that's 16 together. Um, so I gave myself a little bit of extra insulin accounting for those extra rolls just based on that same kind of five grams per roll, right? Or per, I, geez, I can't speak. Five grams, five grams per sushi right now. And then, you know, in a little bit, if I feel like I need it, I will give that second dose. Um, but I just, oh my God, they're so good. I can't stop. Last one. I'm ending this meal at 102, slight arrow up. And I feel good about that. So we'll just watch and see what happens once that insulin starts to kick in, keeping in mind that my insulin usually gets to be the strongest after about one to two hours of being in my system. So that is when I'll kind of come back and check. And if it's still going up, that's when I'd probably give that second bolus. But if we've started to flatten out, I would anticipate it to bring me down pretty well. Just past nine o'clock, so I ate about an hour and a half, two hours ago, and I was on a few client calls in the past hour, and I kept getting a low alert, and I was like, that's so weird, I don't feel low. I was more conservative on my boluses for that sushi than I normally am, so it just didn't make sense, and it turns out, although my, oh, although my Dexcom was showing a very low blood sugar, it was like, L-O-W, like it was spelling it out. I was like, I don't really trust this. So in between my calls, I checked my sugar and my blood sugar was actually in range, um, which basically just shows that I had a compression low. My Dexcom right now is on my lower back. So that is a really common thing for me to get a compression low. And I was sitting in the chair very weird because it's the end of the day and I was just sick of sitting. So I did get a compression low. I don't know where my blood sugar was there, but we pretty much stayed in range um, beside that compression low there um, that came up as soon as I realized I was leaning on it and took the pressure off. So I hope that this doesn't rebound too high. Sometimes if my insulin had been paused there, it wasn't for too long, um, but it can kind of rebound faster than normal. Um, but I also am possibly anticipating the rise from my sushi to start hitting now. So I'll just keep an eye on this. Um, it is a straight arrow up but um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And I might give a correction if I notice this going above probably 150, I would probably step in and give that second bolus and see what happens there. So that was a little annoying diabetes moment, but ultimately took the time, realized it wasn't a true low. So I didn't correct because if I would have corrected, I definitely would have gone way higher than I needed to. It is several days later as I'm editing this video because the final video that I recorded walking through my blood sugar ended up having really muffled sound. So I'm having to redo this. So we left off when I had that compression low 
my blood sugar did come back up into range and there was a little bit of up and down that never became a full low that was worth a treatment or that felt like it needed a treatment. It could have been my Dexcom being a little bit wonky too, but it ended up evening out. And then overnight, there did end up being this rise to about 150. That's where that top line is there on my graph. And my auto mode was able to bring that back down until, um, so when I woke up, I was at range in the morning. Now, if I could go back and do this again, I would probably back up just a little bit on those initial bulls that I did. Again, I don't know if those lows that happened, the compression, the first compression low was definitely a compression low, but the other two, those might've been avoided if I had just a little bit less insulin initially. And I think ultimately I would have before I gone to bed if I had noticed this rise a little bit earlier that's when I would have given maybe just a little bit more I would have started probably around 10 or 20 grams of carbs and then seen what that did so that I didn't go all the way up to that 150. Again, 150 overnight is not terrible. I'm not like upset with this or anything, but obviously if I could stay closer to that 110 or closer to that 100 where I like to be, uh, that would have been better. So I think if I had a little bit of a second dose in there, I wouldn't have seen quite that rise like I did. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please be sure to let me know what other foods you want me to eat in the comments. Um, I'll also be making more vlogs now that I'm done with my dietetic internship and please be sure to like this video subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys later